Good to see you. Um, we're grateful that you're here this morning. If you're here with us for the very first time, there's a yellow uh, sheet of paper that's in your bulletin. That is there so that you can fill that out. Uh, let us know what your name is, but also it provides us the opportunity to alert you to the different ministries that are coming up in the life of our church. And if you're here for the very first time, we're grateful that you're here. We want you to know this. We want you to know that God loves you, that God, you matter to God. But just as importantly, if you're here for the very first time, we want you to know, and if you've been here forever, we love you as well, and that you matter to us as well. So let's t uh, start our time with singing. I'm going to ask you to stand as the band is uh, will lead us in a couple songs this morning. No. 
And the second one, kind of like the first one, as soon as we put the capo on. Mm -hmm. God, I'm running for your heart. Running for your heart till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Yeah. Sing that again. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, let me burn for you again. Lord, Turn to you again. Lord, let me burn for you again. Let me return to you again. God. soul on fire Lord I'm longing for the ways I'm waiting for the day till I am a soul on fire God I'm running for your heart I'm running for your heart till I am a soul on fire Lord I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire So as we uh, go to prayer this morning, I'd I would ask you to remember uh, Frank and Vera and their family. 
Uh, their niece, Janet, uh, died this morning after a long uh, battle with cancer. And um, with that, let's remember those around us. Even those that we may not know, let's remember them as well. I would encourage you to pick up our prayer list. On that list are names that you may or may not know. But it's a wonderful opportunity that when you are spending time either driving, quietly at your, um, in your recliner or wherever, in your home first thing, or um, kind of winding down for the night, to have that list next to you wherever you do those things, to remember the families, the loved ones, the folks on that list, that we need to remember. See, we find prayer an essential part of what we do here at the church. And the reason why we, do, we have prayer and that why we have a prayer ministry is so that not so much that we have to remind God of who God is. That would be kind of silly, right? It's not about reminding God of who he is because God in his fullness knows exactly who he is and continues to be who he is throughout our lives. We have those so that we will remember who God is. So this morning as we pray, as we have a conversation, whether me out loud or you within the quietness of your own head and your heart, let's remember um, Frank and Vera, but let's also remember others that we know who have gone through this part of their lives. So let me pray with you. So God, we know that um, you are the source of healing. And as God, as difficult as it is to see people suffer with cancer, with other diseases that overwhelm them, with those folks that we know that have dementia and Alzheimer's, with those who struggle with lupus, for those who have struggled, again, with other diseases, those who struggle with mental illness and addiction. We pray for them this morning and ask God that you would remind them, that you would show them, that God, you would make them aware, that God, you would, that you would consume their thoughts and their hearts to remind them that God, you choose to be with them in every one of their moments. That God, no matter what they face, that God, you would give them the strength that they need. That God, you would remind them of who you are, that, God, you're a compassionate and loving God who is making your way in a very, very broken world. So, God, enable us this morning not only to see and know who you are, but, God, enable us to see the beauty of the world around us, the beauty of the human spirit, the beauty of courage and faith, the beauty of asking hard questions, the beauty of trusting you, the beauty of our children singing and singing loudly, the beauty of just sitting here in worship, knowing that you exist, and even that when we struggle with that, knowing that you still choose So God, it's always hard to hear bad news. But God, as I was reminded this morning, God, that the good news of you and the good news of your grace and your love is that God, for their niece, this wasn't the end. And for us, and for all those in the world who believe and trust in you, that this world this abundant life living right now in relationship with you is not the end. But God, that she and everyone else that we know will ultimately and eventually experiencing the, 
will experience the wholeness of your healing presence. So God, thank you that not only do we have life abundantly now, but life eternal with you one day. So God, provide us with that hope, that persistence to remember that persistent determination to remember to trust in who you are no matter what we see and no matter what we experience. And so, God, we pray all of this in your son's name and friends as I share with you Sunday after Sunday. We pray the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father, and that's on the screens next to us, and it reminds us of God's provision for us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So um, Mrs. Teat will meet our, wait a minute kids. Mrs. Teat will meet you in the back with Gianna and A.A. Ron, and he, they will meet you in the back, and when you, they get there, that's when I'll give you permission to go. All right, they're back there. Go ahead, guys, go to Sunday school, enjoy yourselves. And as the kids are running back there, uh, we have a few things coming up in our ministry of our church, just some things you need to be aware of. Um, we have a fundraiser for our nursery. It's to replace the floor. Um, and that will be on July 28th at 2 p.m. in our fellowship hall, our activity space. Uh, it will be a premier design. Uh, premier designs. It's something that's being hosted by Stacy Del Toro. Um, it's a jewelry um, opportunity for you to come and purchase some jewelry. And 25% of everything that's made that day will go to the uh, nursery uh, floor. Uh, that nursery floor has probably been there for 100 years. Um, we're grateful for a nursery floor that is 100 years old, which means to me that it's lasted that long because of the activity that's been going on in that for 100 and some years. And so we're grateful to God that we can provide a nursery for our kids again. We're grateful to God that we have Jamie Kurtz down there providing a ministry to our children loving our children, giving them space to learn what it means to be in relationship with Jesus. Also, we have our Dobbins Sunday School Supply Drive, uh, crayon, crayons, glue sticks, colored pencils, and such. That information's in your bulletin. The boxes are on the table out there in our lobby. And I also want to make you aware, over the next couple weeks, we will be, again, as we have been, we'll be collecting for Kids Alley and their back-to-school event that they provide backpacks and all kinds of other back-to-school items for the children in Camden County. Now, that's a ministry for us where we connect with our children no matter where they are. Jesus made it very clear to us that we need to make it about the little ones in our lives. So we have an opportunity to make it about them as well. So we'll be collecting for them. We'll take a part of that and also give it to um, our Delanco School District to make sure kids have uh, stuff in our Delanco School District as well. So just, be, just keep an eye out for that and uh, keep an eye out for some sales that are going on right now. Uh, Target has a whole corner in Delran of back to school supplies. Get it for your own kids and then if you have some opportunity for some leftovers, pass it along to us. Um, it's that most wonderful, they're not even here. I can't bust their chops about it. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And I have a 15-year-old who's going back to school, and when he gets to go back to school, it will be the most wonderful time of the year. So with all that, I'm going to ask the ushers at this time to come forward uh, to um, collect our offering this morning. Um, with that, and when they come down, after they come down, you'll see a video up on the screen. So it's a pretty meaningful video. And then right after that, we will be singing another song and then listening to me speak. Take this 
This heart that is now yours You can have it all, Lord Every part of my world Take this life and breathe on This heart that is now
sing together in response to this gospel of God's grace. We're going to sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness, first and third verses of that. Listen to the words that you're singing this morning as we um, prepare ourselves for uh, God's message to us. So um, I'm up here and I'm thinking about my colleagues that I spend time with. Um, I have a friend of mine, who, Glenn, who's over at New Hope Church in Riverside, uh, Rebecca, who's at the Moravian Church this morning, and also Laura, who's at the other Moravian Church in Palmyra. And I'm thinking about my colleagues before I get up because we always are talking back and forth um, through Facebook Messenger, um, especially before we know we have to get up and... Um, lead worship or preach. And so a friend of mine, uh, Laura, um, just had one hard, difficult moment after another, after another. And then to put the icing on top of the cake, her, do her dog that she has there living with her uh, knocked over her coffee and drank it this morning. And so you have to understand how coffee is the lifeblood of a pastor. So as I pray this morning, you're going to hear me reference each of their names as I pray for them as they get up and uh, share God's um, love and life with their congregations, as I do this morning as well. So let me pray with you. So God, we pray and thank you for the privilege and the honor to communicate your grace and love, for your faithfulness to us. So this morning I pray for Glenn for Rebecca and Laura. I pray for uh, some others like John and Charlie who are also in their congregations this morning ready to preach. And so God, I pray that God, you would fill every pastor in every area throughout the, in, the entire United States in places like Cuba, North Korea, China, and other places that look and where they have to do what I do openly and freely, but they have to do it in hiding. 
So this morning, God, we pray that you would enable us to hear you, to know you, and to experience you this morning. And I pray this in your son's name. Amen. So, we're kind of winding up our series of sermons on Philippians from the last couple weeks, and um, we've been talking about what really matters, and we've been... I initiated the conversation with you about what really matters is this idea that unity or belonging to one another is what's significant on how we do life and how it influences us to live our lives. And so if there's somebody who doesn't connect or belong, they feel like they are all alone in this world. And so it's vital, it's it's significant, it's essential for us as a congregation and as a people that follow Jesus to ensure that people feel loved and included no matter what their story tells us. See, Paul was guided, or not guided, I should say, not guided by his circumstances. His circumstances when he was writing these words in this letter, he was sitting in jail. There were moments in his life where his circumstances were so overwhelming 